Rising inflation risk from war in Ukraine, especially in Europe, weaker growth in the coming quarters, but not a global recession. Higher commodity prices are keeping inflation to elevate it for longer, and Feds are likely to hit another 225 basis points hike this year. ECB are likely to hike in September and December. Now, coming into the markets this week, we are seeing that S&P just took a massive hit. Look at that, 4258 was the closing price. And massively, I'm definitely out of this buy. This is not a market that I want to buy in. So, do I have any more for you this week? I only have probably like support at 4162. If it continues lower, then continue lower, it will. If you are a seller in this market, totally up to you. But it's definitely not my cup of tea, right? So, as we're going into dollar, we are at, you know, higher highs. Good. And we closed almost above the previous high. So, that's good enough for me to go continuing higher. Going into the 4-hour chart, we are still seeing a bit of retraction. But as I said at the beginning of April, we are going to have a bullish dollar month. We have definitely had a dollar bullish month as you can see there is there's april and now we have gone higher this coming week we have been hitting targets already on the monthly just having that in mind coming into next weekly we're just going to continue up to 102 and let's go over to euro that is also having another bearish day but not so much actually not so much but the reason here is, is that there might be higher rate hikes in Europe earlier than expected. And that, my friend, is very, very, very bullish for Euro. But it hasn't yet been priced in or the market doesn't really believe in it. Okay. So what is important for this week is 108.40 down to 107, give or take, and something extra. You then need to make sure that you are following the GDP uh, this week and as well as CPI numbers and PCE, CPE numbers. There is inflation numbers this week for, for major economies. So you need to make sure that you look at the economic calendar for Tuesday in particular, Wednesday in particular and Thursday are the most important days this week. But coming in on Friday, yeah, it's some GDP. There is some, uh, yeah, just GDP or Europe. But that isn't really the big hitter, is it? It's going to be the GDP out of America. The next thing we need to look into is Australia dollar. Okay. First of all, what is it? That is a clear break of structure. We all can see that. It is currently bearish. Nobody is going to dis this this <laughs> that's Norwegian. This is like you know hitting or uh, hitting that. Um, but you know coming back up to resistance at seventy three forty is actually what it would like to see. But as well, what is that? You might ask. That is the weekly sell price at seventy three forty. So if price comes up to seventy three forty, that is a clear sell out of this move. Now the other thing is just to. Make sure that we all have clear vision. Where is monthly target? 71.36. So that is another 200 pips down before we might see a reversal back up on pound. This video slash stream is sponsored by Trader Central. Trader Central provides funding for traders, spot cryptocurrency exchange services, and access to trading tools like copy trade software, portfolio tracking, and a social platform exclusive for communicating with trader friends. Sign up now using the link in the description and get up to 30% off on your first plan. So, sorry, I said pound, sorry, menalty. So, the thing here is, if you need to get funded, you can use Trader Central, link down in the description below, and you will get up to 30% off your first plan. I think that's pretty awesome. Um, but the other thing is, coming into pound, what has hit here? We have already hit monthly target, mate. Is it going to continue lower? Um, I don't know. Maybe. 
it's not uh, directly correlated to stopping there. But another thing is, how far down can we go? How far does Aussie no pound dollar have to go? <laughs> but you would, as a technical trader, just say, okay, cool. We're con we're going to continue this week up to one thirty, down to one twenty seven, and we are just going to continue our mission. What is a what is our mission this week? It is definitely if it comes up to one thirty, go down to one twenty seven, or the key levels. The other thing is, I do mention that it is important to uh, be able to spot when the market is going to be over. And for this week as well, I would say, okay, what's the most important thing? Monthly target. Has it been hit? Yes, it has been hit, but it hasn't been fulfilled yet because with pivot point theory is if that is the entry, that should be the target of around 126, 127. 127.60 area that means that for this upcoming week now we might go down to 127 and then higher so just have that in mind i'm still gonna hold on to 127 to the short side but when is it going to be bullish it is not bullish yet so we can't really we can't really buy it eh? new zealand dollar um What's happening here? It is a clear comeback up to resistance, up to M3, down to one, one down to 0.655. Clear as a day, even. Even the day doesn't get clearer than that. Um pound yen has been falling pretty hard on Friday. And I would even say to you, alright, so what's your site? What's your direction then, mate? What is your direction here? So you need to have made up your choice. Are you going to be a buyer on this market or are you going to be a seller? So clearly, the sellers are thinking one uh, 166.50 is perfect level to sell. Okay. Stop loss above previous high. Nothing else than that. That is a stop loss or no entry. Okay. That's your, uh, that, that, that's your trade plan. Straightforward. Nothing else. If this continues to fall off and you don't get up here, do you get angry? Do you get frustrated? That's totally up to you. But you need to remember that in this week we, you know, we do still have yen weakness potential. We still have the Bank of Japan still buying, or at least the thought of it, buying buying bonds, and they can come out and do that again and again and again until they stop, kind of a thing. Okay. The other thing to remember that 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 the Fed is still giving out hawkish comments. They are still, market is still pricing in pretty aggressive interest rate hike this year. And if you look into the CME watch tool, which you can see live market pricing in what they think is going to be at the end of the year or for which ever Fed meeting. Right now, it's 99% chance there's going to be a 50 basis points in the next meeting. The market's already priced in a. 50 basis points again in June. There's a double high, double rate hike twice. And also the thing to remember um, for for the markets is where does dollar, where do you want dollar to go? What is your analysis here? And my analysis is we're still going to be dollar bullish. And we have been dollar bullish for this up for this passing week with various results. And also we have to remember that there is an election in Europe today, in France, sorry, that I think that was supposed to be today. So that might also move the euro in whatever the direction, depending on who is becoming the president. Now they need 50%, 50% confidence from their voters. So is somebody going to get 50%? Well, it's a tight, it's a tight, uh, it's a tight race. So really be on your toes for that and if Le Pen is winning I do not think that is positive for for Euro but you know that's my small opinion there um the other thing is for oil I want it to go higher it's currently not going higher so I'm currently just going to say I want it to go higher I will wait for the reversal I went for, I will wait for it and then I will take it as it goes um Gold, I said, you know, target 2,000. 
Tja, that happened pretty hard pretty quickly on Monday last week. Came down and it even continued lower. And as far as I remember, we I said we have eight targets, both for buyers and sellers. Meaning that this week is going to be a more difficult week to trade. But, you know, 1951 tar uh, pullback and down to 1900, uh, 1890 sounds like a good deal. The only question is what is going to make gold go higher? One thing that can make gold go higher is wars or rocket launches or something that is kind of unprecedented that we don't really see coming before they're actually coming. Is the Ukrainian situation going to make gold go higher? Probably not because it's already been priced in. We already know uh, what is going on there. There is still a lot of a lot of um, a lot of pain and suffering for the local community. My heart goes out to them. But the thing here is, what is the economical impact? It is probably growth going to fall 20%. I think it was I think they were they were forecasting that. That's a massive hit to the economy in Ukraine. It's gonna definitely go into Europe, it's definitely gonna go into Russia. And how much more is it gonna affect the economies around? Well, we are still yet to say. But as I said earlier, we're going to have those those numbers coming out this week. That's why I mentioned them as well. Okay, so gold targets come down to 1900. Oil, I want to go up again, but I don't see any any good markets right now on it. And dollar, I think it's going to go up to 102. And if you are part of this group, please subscribe and you might get $100 this upcoming week. And it's going to be a live session tonight. Okay, cool. Boom.